Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Delora, Delora. It's almost the end of Capricorn season. I don't know how I feel about it, (laughs) but we're here. How are you today? (laughs) I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Speaking of Capricorn, what it do, Shayna? One of my good girlfriends, her birthday was literally this week. Uh, She shares a birthday with like Michelle Obama. (laughs) Right? I'm like, that's a big day. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think there's any celebs who have my birthday, but definitely all of the different celebs I've seen who have been celebrating, including our first quick headline, Beauty, who we'll be talking about in just a second. Love to see it. Capricorn yeah. energy forever. All right. <laughs> sure. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton of Aquarius in my family. So I bring have, it on. I have two best guy friends who are Aquarius is one I'm going to be celebrating with uh when this episode comes out probably so nice I definitely love some Aquariuses but you know special place in the heart for your own sign as you a fierce cancer of course of course I'm giving you a hard time Ashley that's all I'm doing (laughs) over here well guys Thank you for joining us yet again for another episode. We are going to get into some quick headlines and hot topics as usual. And as I mentioned, our first one up, a fellow cap beauty, Miss Lori Harvey, has gone Instagram official with new boo and snowfall actor Damson Idris. It had been rumored, it had been speculated, it had been talked about. But as she rung in her 26th birthday, she shared to Instagram stories, a picture of him kissing her on the cheek. He shared a picture of her with some stacks, living her best life. He said, happy birthday, Nunu. So I guess we to the point, we giving each other nicknames again. I was still, you know, Turtle was the Michael B. Jordan nickname. So now we got Nunu. As a lover of rom-com books and movies tv shows etc a nickname is essential i wonder if it's because of something to really to do with her or is this a borrow from atl like i really was curious <laughs> when i saw it what the f is a turtle ashley but sure <laughs> i forget why michael b jordan said he named her that but let me not do the comparison thing because i know that's been all out here on these not internets. yet anyway <laughs> they y'all been pulling up the pettiest photos of Damson and Michael yeah. B in previous times together. Yeah. That does not mean they're friends, guys. They work in the industry together. They're associates. Exactly. They've they're met in the same circles. That's all we know. They've met, right? And I mean, Lori's out here as usual. Multiple her times. Life. Sure. Lori had just graced the cover of Essence in December. She was glowing in her pictures with, I mean, the crew. Like, it was a, a party party that she had for her 26 year. Everybody from Ryan Destiny, Haley Bieber, all sorts of folks. Kendall Jenner, Jenner. Offset, yep. all sorts of folks who showed up and showed out for her. So what do you think about this new coupling and all the drama that seems to follow Lori Harvey's love life? Well... I'll first say that I wonder if Desim has a type because there was rumors that him and So Weedy mm-hmm. were talking several months ago. Mm-hmm. And he made it, of course, Instagram official with Lori on her birthday, which is something that she does every year. Like that's she makes I, her announcements on her birthday. That's what I heard. And I was like, I guess everybody else has been following a pattern. I had not paid any attention to when these relationship announcements come. I have noticed though. And I say this because I feel like most of the year you don't hear much about her or what, you know, was really going on. You, Yes, she'll be on a few red carpets, what have you. But around her birthday, 
her latest love is buying her something <laughs> or taking her somewhere. I mean, let's not forget future taking her girls out on some type of beach vacation. I remember that. But- be giving her stocks. Oh, yes. <laughs> to her credit, though, her birthday isn't during cuffing season. So we expect. What do y'all expect this woman that to is- do? so funny i appreciate that (laughs) rationale but yeah i mean you know me the only thing i care about with this whole Lori harvey thing is her retiring that baby hair situation because anybody over the age of 16 just make it stop well damn (laughs) i wasn't ready I wasn't ready. I used to have a, I actually used to have a stronger stance on that, but obviously baby hair is in uh, for all ages, <laughs> but that's what I used to say before, you know, that trend took over the world. Apparently I'm always actually super impressed because I've never laid my baby hairs down. Part of that is because I have such an aversion to like hair being on my face. Like I, so you never had it. a bang. I've I've done bangs, but then I regret it usually not too long after because I'm like, oh, I hate having this hair on my face. So I've done bangs actually several times, but I always just feel like, okay, I'm ready for it to grow out. But the baby hairs, you, I mean, you also got to slick them down. And that's yes. really the thing is product more than anything being on my face. Ugh. So and I've never done that it. perfect ratio to where it keeps your hair from you know, producing flyaways, but then you don't want it flaky. caked up on your forehead. Yeah. So I'm usually person, impressed. I think people be looking hella good with it personally. <laughs> Black people. I personally <laughs> have never had baby hairs. That has never been my ministry. I have definitely embraced Banes, no Banes, had, you know, hair pulled back and up and off, apparently. <laughs> But you look good with it, though. That's the thing. You know what works for you. You look good. I appreciate you saying that, Ashley. But I just say all that to say the people in my family who rock baby hairs very well has always been my sister and now my daughter. So uh (laughs) there you go. You know, I guess with this Lori Harvey thing, my perspective is just she's in her mid 20s. I don't know why everybody acts like it's such a surprise that she's not settled with necessarily one dude granted the caliber of men that yes. we've seen her out and about with is fascinating stellar and with the exception of freaking future um yeah because when she, she was with him i just pray like lord let her not don't get, get pregnant, pregnant. That's- <laughs> please but she i mean she remember she was engaged when she was like 20 yes. to that beautiful and soccer that's player. what i told my mom i was like after she broke that engagement she was like all bets are off i am living my full life and what kills me is that she is still so young yeah. <laughs> doing I, all of this and i can relate to Lori on that too uh in terms of that <laughs> whole remember. being yes. being locked down real young and then being like okay yeah that's yeah i need to live so i think too michael b jordan lest we forget is 35 right so he probably was yes. possibly looking for a more serious commitment now but then again she is still being when she was 25 24 now she's 26 so who knows but it's her life live your best life you are gorgeous you out here your profile has raised you on your j-lo shit i guess you know what i'm saying like live your best life Lori. and in the shade room comments in particular the hatred i sometimes see that comes for her i just don't understand it like she's just a young woman living her life <laughs> i'm reminded of Charlemagne's comments on the breakfast club i call it proper poom poom management you know what i mean like <laughs> Should she be with somebody broke? Should she be with someone who's unattractive? Like, yes, attractive. Yes, successful. Yes, available. Why not? They would rather see her just stay with one man, no matter what that looks like for her. That's what I think it is. It's painful for some people to see a woman date, like actually date, not stay in one relationship with one man. And, you know, for those people... Lori about to be out here living her best life. So hope y'all get over it sooner rather than later. Smirk on her face constantly. Looking 
snatched every time I see this woman. Yeah, she looks great. Although she's trying to have, you know, be the it girl in fashion, but her her looks lately have not been hitting at all, in my personal opinion. I saw a like, it was had to be on people or one of those, like a you know, the scrolling of her best looks. There was one that I know I didn't like because it was like a hooded like jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. And that one I didn't like. But that one, I think it was Michael Kors, the gray coat, the gray dress, the Nike, not Nike, the um Yankees cap. That's yeah, one of my cute. favorite looks she's ever done. I'm talking about the oversized jeans that turned into the jeans it, that went all the way up and there was a belt and I'm like, sis... I don't think I like that either. It don't sound like I would probably like that either. But her birthday looks were super cute. So I give her that. And the all black attire. Yeah. Seems like it was the requirement. Yeah. I mean, she looks great. So Lori, more of the story, live your best life. I thought it was funny that people were saying, damn, and just so so long as you know, you're here for a good time, not a long time. Wait, wait, he is a successful actor. He Let's is. not forget. He also has that British accent thing going for him. So that's cute. Um, He'll be fine. He's also a good looking man, obviously, but his show is ending. So, you know, let's see what his next projects are going to look like. He'll be fine regardless. They act like the men, these men are victims. They was with Lori Harvey for a bit. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fine. I don't think she's just leaving heart shattered everywhere she goes. I really don't. No. And it sounds like she actively loved Michael too for suspicious reasons. Ooh. All right. I won't touch that because I like Michael <laughs> Jordan. I know, but it's kind of heartbreaking. Like, oh, I hope it's not true. Yeah. I'm not going to touch it. All right. Let's move on <laughs> to our next quick headline. This one much more somber r.i.p to lisa marie presley she died last week after suffering an apparent cardiac arrest she was 54 years old in a statement from cnn or via cnn i should say from the family priscilla presley and the presley family are shocked and devastated by the tragic death of their beloved lisa marie they are profoundly grateful for the support love and prayers of everyone and ask for privacy during this very difficult time days before she was hospitalized lisa marie and priscilla had just attended the golden globes in support of austin butler who picked up the award for his portrayal of elvis so It was definitely shocking when the news came out. First, the news came out that she had had the cardiac arrest and that she had passed away. But when I was looking at some photos from the red carpet, she did not look well. Like she did not look like her usual self. So she looked pretty weathered for sure. I know the coroner's report as of right now is, I don't think it's inconclusive, but it's something along the lines of them still needing more info to determine a cause of death so more yes. information will come but they have said she's obviously uh, going to be buried at graceland mm-hmm. i think what made me sad about this too is because i remember that her son had just passed away not too long ago from suicide yes. Yes. um and i'm i'm sure as a parent that's just a heartbreak you just never get over so my heart definitely goes out to her family what were your thoughts I was just so heartbroken to hear the news because one, it was just so unexpected. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like you mentioned, we just saw her at the Golden Globes. They have been very hands-on with the promotion of the Elvis project. And now that we're in award season, I was expecting to see her at all the, you know, red carpets and things along those lines. And so it's just, it just is so sad. It's so funny because we never got a chance to talk about this, Ashley, and we'll probably do it one day. But that whole Nepo baby op-ed that had Hollywood upside down, losing his mind. <laughs> she, for me, has always been like the OG Nepo baby, right? Like in my understanding or knowledge of being a child of someone extremely famous and her life in the spotlight from my my vantage point has been a very interesting one like her relationships uh i.e her marriages specifically with michael jackson comes to mind Mm -hmm. that kiss at the vmas that no one wanted but we got it (laughs) and we never will forget it (laughs) right even 
you know, Mrs. Jackson saying she talks like a black girl in one of her interviews with Oprah. I'm like, Lord, this is hilarious. But she just has always been there. You know, I can't say I'm really familiar with her music. But what I will say is this. I didn't realize who her daughter is. So really that I read this year or I'm sorry, this past year was called Daisy Jones and the Six, which is now adapted to a series moving to Amazon Prime, which is probably going to be a major hit because the book is phenomenal. Her daughter's taking the lead. And I was like, who is this girl playing Daisy Jones? Because she's pitch perfect for the role based off of the character from the book. And she looks, you know, badass rocker chick. And I'm like, that's Lisa Marie's daughter. Of course she's perfect for this freaking role. Um, I guess it makes sense you didn't know because she went by Riley Keough. So there's no affiliation to her mother in that sense. But yeah, I love her daughter. She's a great actress. Yeah. I'm just... I just feel so sorry for her kids because she has some young daughters, you know what I mean? Still in their teens. Yeah. It's just a lot of um, heartbreak. I'm thinking about her mother. Like, goodness gracious. No one (sighs) expects to bury their child, their only child. So much prayer and love to the family for sure. Well said, Delora. Let's move on to our next quick headline. Another surprise announcement for me personally, Anika Noni Rose getting hitched to her longtime girl surprised everybody because I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, the I'm looking at she did an exclusive with brides and I'm looking at the um, the photos and the headline and all of that. And they say that the actress, vocalist and Tony Award winner put some respect on her name. Right. Uh is married to another fellow actor, Jason Durden. Apparently they met in 2014 when they were both cast in the Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun. Anika said, we were friends for a couple years, but the timing just wasn't right. We went off and did our own things and were disconnected for a while and then swung back. And then a few years later, they had the timing down pat. Apparently, they got engaged back in 2021, I believe it is. I'm going back and forth between the Brides and the uh, and the Essence article that I have up as well. And it just seems like it was beautiful. They got married at Paramore Estate in Los Angeles. Her dress was something that she had custom designed with a London-based designer, Beamy Okinola. And he also had his suit tailor-made by Wayne Willis of Well-Groomed Man. So just wanted to give their stylist a shout out as well. But location, pitch perfect. Attire was beautiful. And again, just so unexpected and beautiful. What'd you think? First of all, this was the best surprise this week for sure because i mean hello first disney princess princess tiana she's married and her dress is fit for a queen i love 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 that dress and i love his use of pink like yes sir thinking outside the color yes things matching you know the attire matching their skin tones it was so beautiful you know what i didn't realize She's 50. Yeah, I looked up her age as well because for some reason I was like, is she in her 30s or 40s? I definitely wasn't thinking she was 50, but as we know, Black don't crack, so. (laughs) (laughs) And the fact that they got married three months ago. Right, October, and are just now making the announcement. Did it on their own terms, which I always love. Yes, and apparently her husband for a lot of black folks we know him from greenleaf (laughs) so (laughs) oh man i think this is just beautiful news i'm super happy for her i can't say i knew who she was dating so you know to see her pop up and be married i love that she's also getting the you know front page or cover page treatment for this i just love 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 congrats to the beautiful couple Congrats indeed. All right, let's move on to our very last quick headline. I wanted to give some love to this 
partnership that I heard about that Spike Lee is doing with Gersh in order to create a fellows program for students at Atlanta University Center Consortium. I'm looking at an article from Deadline and the fellowship supports students at three historically black colleges and universities, Morehouse College, Spelman College and Clark Atlanta University. The fellows program is based on the principle that access plus exposure will create opportunities. Its inaugural class will consist of five graduating students from those schools selected by a panel, including Lee, and they will receive academic debt relief, industry mentorship, postgraduate internships, and full-time employment, all provided by Gersh. I just thought this was wonderful to hear, especially someone of Spike Lee's stature, I really do think that these students will be put in a great position to succeed and thrive. He is an alum of Morehouse. And also, I understand in general, the interest in the Atlanta-based HBCU. Sometimes I do wish these opportunities went to some of the other HBCUs that don't get the same amount of funding and coverage. But I was still super excited and happy to hear about this. What did you think? This is beautiful news. I mean, there's always a conversation within the Black community about people in power and position, doing the work, you know, creating community, being leaders within their community. And that's definitely this. I'm looking at BlackEnterprise.com right now. He mentioned... My elders often told me deeds, not words. And that's definitely that. When we're talking about creative spaces, it's so important for the ability to create without the constraints, the external constraints of money, debt. You know what I mean? Like it's it's such an interesting medium. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't able to thrive because of opportunity, exposure, money, (laughs) So all the various barriers to entry, including the whole that's why the whole Nepo baby debate yes. is also what it is, because yes. Hollywood is very exclusive. Very. And so it's hard to try to get a foot in the door when you're coming from spaces where you don't have those connections. You didn't necessarily get that same leg up. And with that leg up, meaning the lessons learned, right? Like not having to start from scratch every generation, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Like I said, I think especially because it's coming from someone of this stature with this reputation, with this legacy already, these students are definitely going to be set up for some great things. So I just wanted to give a highlight to that. That's in positive Black news for you guys today. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. With him graduating Morehouse, I'm always reminded of when Samuel L. announced his Oscar win and Spike jumped on him (laughs) in his purple suit. Yes. Screaming, Morehouse! You know, like, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. (laughs) All right, so Laura, let's get into our hot topics, which are more awards. Last week, we spoke about the Golden Globes. This week, let's talk about the Critics' Choice Awards which just happened. And then the NAACP Image Awards noms have been released as well. So what were your top memorable moments from things you've seen from the Critics' Choice Awards? Any fashion stand out for you? Any award wins stand out for you for this one? Yes. So I did not watch it live. But when it came to the fashion, I was very, very excited and very, very pleased. Um, My favorite looks of the night belong to the... Janelle Monet, please yep. check out our recap of Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Uh, she's a she's a winner, baby. Also, Shirley Ralph looked amazing in gold. Mm-hmm. Nisi Nash, oh my gosh, her body yadi yadi in that dress was everything, and she <sighs> was also styled by my good friend Micah and Wayman. And then when it came to the speeches. They came to play. Yep. Shirley Ralph and Nisi Nash speeches are like something I'm going to have to either have ready to play every morning or 
written out, you know, transcript. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up on the mirror in the bathroom. Do not forget. Those are the standouts. And oh, okay. Two more things. Quinta's dress, I loved. She looked amazing. And Brendan Fraser's win, the joy, the joy he had. I just was like, I'm rooting for you, sir. We all are rooting for you. <laughs> it was also interesting how some of the folks who didn't make it to the Globes made it to this award show. Sure did. So, okay. Yep. I also, Avi, loved some of these speeches the two you mentioned i feel like have been the most prominent on these internets we even did a post to our stories of the line from dc nash that was felt that in my chest that's all i can say but there were definitely some great great moments to your point about fashion oh i was so thoroughly pleased and it had been a couple misses for me with these awards yeah the only i think top three that I had that I didn't hear you mention were Angela Bassett and Christian Siriano. I think I just really loved all the black dresses this award show. They were great. <laughs> but uh, Angela, I also thought Michelle Yeoh looked great and Carolina Herrera and then Lily James and Oscar de la Renta I loved. You know who I was a little surprised about with the fashion is Kate Blanchett. Did you see Kate Blanchett's dress? Are we having an afternoon lunch meeting on Friday? Like, I was super, super confused because Kate Blanchett has been someone who's been on many a best dress list when it comes I to mean, red carpets. Yes, ma'am. I because was she very has like surprised. that sophistication, that regalness, that like old Hollywood style. Yeah, I don't know what she was doing. <laughs> I was a little surprised by that, but. Overall. I was also surprised to see Amanda Seyfried show up rolling out of bed after giving birth <laughs> to win her award. <laughs> hey, hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. She like when amazing. you went and saw Black Panther after just <laughs> dropping a baby. Very true. I had to do what I had to do. Well, kind of forever. But overall, I thought that the award show red carpet was beautiful. There were too many people actually for me to name. So I was just giving my top tops. But I think as far as the wins and all of that, it was fairly similar to what we've seen from the Globes. So nothing was shocking at all that I can recall. Love to see all the love given to everything everywhere all at once that's continuing to happen as well as Abbott. And yeah, we got the Oscars. We got the Oscars. So we'll see what happens, guys. Announcements happening next week. Let's talk about the NAACP Image Award noms. So a couple standout things for me. Entertainer of the Year noms are all women this year. Yes, ma'am. And okay. I don't know who's going to win. <laughs> I will. I can guess. I can. I don't know, man. It's hard. Quinta. Quinta. Exactly. Although Zendaya is out here killing the game. Two Emmys, two Golden Globes. I don't know what she's going to do after Euphoria wraps. This is like the project of her career right now. Right now, because you also have to factor in this. All of her major roles have been teenagers. And we know she's a grown-ass woman now. But Well, except Malcolm and Marie. And again, hated yeah, that it. Was, that was her tapping her, wa her toe in the water. But... All of her big blockbusters, Spider-Man, Euphoria. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Dune is, you know, that's a dystopian future. But still, it should be interesting. She's going to have a phenomenal career, barring anything crazy happening. I agree. Her I think she'll be talent. fine, but... Yeah, I'm I just I'm Dune. just speaking about how excited. Like I'm just speaking out loud mm. that I'm so excited to continue to see her career. Like she's yes. I didn't even follow her as like a wasn't it Disney was she Disney or Nickelodeon? She was definitely a Disney cat. Okay, yeah. I didn't even follow her as a Disney cat. Like my love for Zendaya came as she's gotten older, but man, just the growth and the talent, I can only imagine. Oh, I'm excited. Anyway, I think it's going to go to Quinta, though. In the Virgo determination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then the other major thing I noted, the Best Man Final Chapters got a lot of love, except for Tay Diggs. Shocking to me. Morris Chestnut, Terrence Howard, Regina, Nia, Sanai, all of them got noms, but not Tay Diggs. And arguably, Harper is the main character of that series in those films. Correct. How do you think he feels about that? I would feel slighted unless he chose not to. I'm going to say something wild. I was going to say something wild. <laughs> what are you going to say? You know, he feels like he's been punished for marrying a, a white woman. Yes, I remember him talking about that. But I don't think this necessarily means that you're not going to get nominations. I guess they just felt you weren't the strongest in the series. Granted, once you see it, Delora, and we can talk about it. I'm sure there's a rationale. I know there is, but it sure. still just felt like a snub. It still felt like a snub. And then the last thing I wanted to mention from my perspective was that Will Smith at least got some love from the NAACP. He definitely did. Image and, Awards. And then I'm going to also, um, you know, I'm not eating crow, but I have not watched him. <laughs> so I thought I, I would. I, have I thought I would, but I have not gotten around to it. And uh, apparently other people did not either. But it has nothing to do with, you know, me icing out Will by any, you know, stretch of the imagination. But it's just the subject matter for me. I mentioned this when we talked about it, when the trailer dropped all of that. I do not like slavery movies. It is uh, it takes a lot for me to sit down and actively choose to watch it. So I'm sure I will at some point, maybe with family surrounded by love to make it through <laughs> so just, it's, oh it's, it takes you out i'm just saying it may i, I get angry you need to sing a hymn while watching the girl same movie. i know i'm gonna get hot i'm a <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna get physically hot just because i'm gonna get so frustrated it's gonna be so hard so no I, I, i'm with you but what were your thoughts when you uh saw the noms any standouts additionally for you Looking at the nominations, frankly, I got super excited because it's a lot of the projects and a lot of people that I love, right? Yes. Looking at, for example, outstanding male performance in a movie, all of my dudes, all my dudes, Jonathan Majors, uh, Daniel Kalua, Will Smith, like who's going to win this category? And let's not talk about the women's side. Um, for supporting actress in particular is literally all Wakanda forever yep. with the exception of Janelle Monet. <laughs> so I'm just really excited. I look forward to seeing who's going to win. You know what I mean? I feel like this is just, it's usually a safe space and a joyous space to be in. Usually a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. yeah, even from scratch got love, which yes. check out that recap guys. Laura got that in for us. Oh! Namor, the gentleman who played Namor, got nominated. I'm like, okay, sir. So I, it's going to be a I good show. It. It's going to be a good show. It will air on BET on Saturday, February 25th. So be sure to tune in, guys, and show that award show much love. All right, Laura, that's all we got for the people for this episode. What are we recapping next week? Ashley. For Recap Nation, y'all know we have talked about these people before. And honestly, there's been so much conversation around these people these last couple of weeks. And you're probably like, why haven't you talked about them during quick headlines and hot topics? Because we need a whole recap episode to talk about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> Netflix docuseries, six episodes. Let's not even talk about that book, Spare, mm -hmm. by the Prince Dracarys Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Let go. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next time. Be blessed. Live your best life. Stay safe in these streets. Bye.